Welcome back everyone. This is going to be a short video on 211 and 212. We're going to be talking about inner division and modulo. I have to stop myself because I always go modulus, but it actually is modulo. So we're going to be talking about the results when you divide an integer by an integer. So the example gives us over here 10 divided by 4. So if I were to ask you what is 10 divided by 4, most people are going to just go 2.5 or they might use their calculator to get it and use 2.5. But the bottom line is when you divide an integer by an integer, you're going to get an integer. So what that means is there is no such thing as anything after decimal point. So here you're going to see that 2.5 is the actual answer, but because it's an integer, you're going to get chopped off and the answer is going to be zero. Same thing with here. This is really important to understand because if you're doing this and then dividing this into something else, then it's very easy to forget that the fact that this is going to be zero. So you see that it is 0.75 and then it gets rounded off to zero in here. So here you have the area of a triangle, one half the base times the height, which is really a rectangle split in half. And here, the fact that one point, one divided by two is going to be zero, you're always going to get zero. So I will let you uh, look at the other examples over here. And we'll do a few things real quick. So we have three divided by 13 divided by three. So I'm going to type in the wrong answer. And the reason why I type in the wrong answers a lot of times, because I want you to make sure that if you do get the wrong answer, look at the explanation they give you. Sometimes it's it's okay, and sometimes it's really very, very good. So normally it would be uh, 3 would be 4.3. So let's type in 4.3 and see if it gives us any really good explanation. And no. So it's simple division, throwing away any of the remainder. So that kind of helps out. So let's just try 4. And that looks good. Now this is an easy one. But as you see, we're doing integer by integer, and because this is larger, it's going to be less than 1, so the answer is always going to be 0. This one actually is pretty easy, too, because we can look, we're multiplying something by something, but if you look here, the 1 divided by 3 is going to be 0, so we don't even have to worry about what this is. So this answer should be 0. And now we have x divided by y, where x is 10. So we would look and think, well, it's 2.5, but then it's going to get rounded off. So let's try 2. So now we have a 4 that is actually being cast as a double. So we're going to get an integer divided by double is going to yield a double. So we should get an answer of 2.5. And then I'll let you do the rest of these here. And here is an example of division by zero. So let's take a quick look at these things here. So 100 divided by 2 should be 50. Now we have another easy one, which was the same as before. 1 divided by 2 is going to be zero. So regardless of what's over here, the answer is always going to be zero. Now we have a little dilemma here. We're thinking that, oh, this is going to be zero. But remember that the order of operations is parentheses first, exponents next, multiplication and division second, and then addition and subtraction. So here we have multiplication and division, which are in the same. So what that means is you're going to go left to right. So we're going to multiply 100 times 1, which is 100, divided by 2, so we should get 50. Now we have the same exact thing, only we have parentheses. So we have the parentheses gets done first. So 1 divided by 2 is 0. And we're going to divide that into 100. That's not going to work. So we're going to need to type in error. And then you can do this one on your own. So the module is basically what the remainder is. So you can see that... 10 goes into 24 two times, or 2.4, we have a remainder of 4. So the answer, 24 modulo 10, would be simply 4. 
and 50 divided by 50 is zero. A very easy way to see if a number is even or odd is divide, or rather use the modulo by two, and if the answer is zero, it is even. If it's one, then it's odd. So that's very simple. So we're gonna look here. We have 50 divided by two, so this should be 25 with no remainder. So the answer should be here. We should get an answer of zero. So this would tell us that it is an even number. So now we have 51 mod two, and I'm just gonna say mod, and that would be 25 with a remainder of one. So we're gonna type in just one. Here is very simple. If you're dividing by 10, the easiest thing to do is just move the decimal point over one and you'd have 7.8. So eight would be the remainder. And same thing with this, we have 59.6. So six should be the remainder here. And I'll leave you do the rest of them here because we have a situation where we're gonna have division by zero. So be careful about that. And here is something that I'm going to do this wrong the first time. And then I'll explain why it's wrong. So they kind of do a little sneaky thing in here. We're doing modulo and now they're throwing this at us, but it does say inner division and modulo. So you want to make sure that you're reading this very, very, very carefully. So the first thing is the florist wants to create as many bunches of 12 flowers as possible. Total flowers holds the number of flowers available. So we're basically going to divide by 12 to see how many bunches we can get. But we're doing modulo. So here's a very simple mistake that could easily be done. So we have total flowers. And I will try to spell better. We have total flowers. And then let's do mod 12. But that's wrong because that's going to give us a number that doesn't matter. If, if total flowers is 5,000, we're going to get a number um, between 0 and 11. So let's check here and see if they beat this up, which they did. So notice that it does tell us that this is wrong and they expect it to be division. They don't really give you a complete explanation there, which is why I wanted to do it. And here we have it here. And I will let you take care of this. Notice it says remaining flowers here. And then this is a little bit about parentheses and step-by-step -step as to how to do the RAND. This is a little confusing the way it is. So what you'd want to do is put the parentheses around here to make sure that you're actually doing the rand of this and not something else. Because as this right here, the 35 minus 18 would done would get done first. So you would be doing something modulus 17 in here. So that's okay. Um, so what we're going to do here is let you do the output here. And this is a little bit confusing to look at. But once you look at it a few times, you'll understand how the RAND function works and how parentheses. So remember, this gets done first. Yeah, the parentheses here gets done first. And then we're going to do the others. And let's see, we have some modular examples here. And so... I'll just do one or two of these, given a negative number x, which yields in the range of five. So in order for you to do something in a range of five, we would need to use six because you would have zero, one, two, three, four, five. But what it wants us is uh, yields a number in the range five to 10. So if we did x mod five, we would get zero, one, two, three, and four only. If we did, we wanted six, we would get zero, one, two, three, four, five. So if we did that, we're gonna get zero to five, and then we're going to add five. So that gives us the range of five to 10. So let's go with this here. 
And let's try one more. And then you can work on the others on your own. Given a negative number x, which expression has the range minus 10 to 10? So remember, if you want minus 10 to 10, you need, that's 20, you need to have 21. So we're going to make sure that we have mod 21. So we get something between 0 and 20. Then we're going to subtract 10. And that takes care of that. This is a little tricky in here. Um, but I will let you know it's not this. I won't tell you which one it is. It's not this because now you're using mod 1000. So it's going to be soon. The four digits from the right is non-zero. So let's uh, click on this here and let's look at the explanation, which really is a good explanation in here. So it yields between 0 and 999. So that means the four last digits in here. So that takes care of this. And I'm going to put this video on pause. We're going to just talk a little bit about type conversion. Uh, we're actually back. So I have type conversions in here. So we talked about implicit type conversion. That's where you actually can have a type done by the compiler, or you can do the explicit, which is done by you. So you can see here that this is 3.6 becomes a double. This is all done by the compiler. So it tells us type the value of the expression given integer is 5 for any floating point answers used to 10. So because this is a double, the answer to this should be strictly 2. Should Let's see what happens when we type this in here, given for an in here. So let's type in here. And that's wrong. And I did that on purpose. And that's one of the things about Zybook. You need to make sure that you are actually, you need to make sure, a little phone interruption there. Uh, you need to make sure that you're typing in the decimal point. So we're going to put in point zero, and we're good here. So now we need to do the same thing. This is 3.0. So we're doing a double divided by an integer. So the result's going to be a double. So now we should get 1.5. Should be good. And let's try this one. So now we have the number of items, which is an integer. And then 10 is an integer. And then we're dividing it by 2. So num items is 5. So now we have 15 divided by 2 which is 7.5. So let's see if 7 is the right answer here. And now here we have one more. And it says no items divided by 10, but this time we're dividing by a double. So we have 15 divided by a double. So this should give us 7.5. And we're good here. So uh, let's just go through this real quick. So it tells us type in a value in the variable, the assignment statement given integers 5, and double weight is 0.5, which, of course, is obviously double. And we want to type in for any floating point tile answer to the nearest 10. So we have some double there is the item weight is going to be 0.5. And the number of items is 5. So basically, we're multiplying 5 times 0.5, which should be 2.5. So let us see if we're wrong. It'll tell us we're wrong. So we're good here. And then we have one more here. Um, sum in var is type integer. So now we're doing a sum var equals integer item weight times number of items. Well, the issue here is sum var is going to be an integer. So regardless of what the outcome of this is, it's going to be an integer. So I will leave you with that and let you work on it on your own. Now, typecasting, there is something called static cast. And what that does, it temporarily converts it to a double or whatever you want so that you can use it in an expression. Because if you have a variable, you can't put in, say, it's um, X or number. You can't put number point zero. 
So you would need to static cast it, and we want to use the double. So notice you just type in the word static underscore cast, and in brackets, you type in the data type that you want in there. So we're going to do num sales plus num sales two. Both of these are integer divided by two should give us an integer. Now we have static cast double. Now, this is a little tricky. So let's forget about the static cast right now. So what's going to wind up happening here is we're actually going to get um, the right number. Um, but what, the reason why I'm pointing this out is a lot of times people try to static cast something after it's been divided. For instance, put static cast and parentheses around here would just convert 2 to 2.0. The decimal point would still be there because it's a double, but the answer would be wrong. So because we're doing static cast double here, we should be getting a double. And let's see what happens here, which we did. And now we have num sales plus num sales 2 divided by total sales, so all integer. So this should be an integer. And now we're dividing an integer by a double, so we should get double. And here's some common errors. So just be careful of integer division. We talked about that, so I'm going to let you go through that on your own. So we'll do just one here. Uh, we have what's going to yield 2.5. So obviously, integer divided by integer is not going to. So if we do static cast, this is what I was talking about by 4. So let's take a look at this. And 10 divided by 4 is going to be 2.5. But because this is integer divided by an integer, the answer is actually going to round it off to 2, but it will be 2.0. So let's go with this one and see what happens. And we're good. So I'm going to let you do the rest on your own here. And I believe this might be the end of this section. So that is good. Next, we're going to be doing some binary numbers. So uh, you will have this um, to look at as many times as you want. I hope these videos are working well for you. Uh, please um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And please uh, view comments in there. Put as many comments as you like. Let me know. So if these videos are helpful for you, if there's a video that you would like for me to make, I will do my best to make it. So that's it for this, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.